Alex Brink is our guest. He's in studio. He is uh, going to be doing pregame stuff for the Cougs Radio Network this year. He we got just out and got done coaching at the opening here in Portland um, when the Elite 11 with Trent Dilfer. You also coach for E-Force and at Lake Ridge High. E-Force is, you guys do personal training, personal coaching. You guys got a ridiculous staff. You yeah. mentioned Darren Thomas. Yeah. He's one of those guys. Yeah. LaMichael James, yeah. yourself. James Dockery. James well, Dock. <laughs> Goodness, I know, right? Yeah, we got guys Brent Haberly, Ryan DePaul. All well, our E Force is um, a very it, it's been a very neat experience for me. I mean, it's all former college and professional guys helping you know coach young football players in the area. Something that in the Northwest hasn't happened really ever. And so you know, just getting not just high school but youth players, guys, just getting the opportunity to kind of learn some basic skills, not just roll the footballs out in August and start playing football, but actually you know develop throughout the year through camps trainings different things and seven on seven like you're alluding to yeah we've talked about this before on the show and we've heard like uh, coaches have come out urban meyer was one of them who and nick saban those two guys have both said you know the seven on seven circuit it's kind of turning into aau type stuff and it's not really helping grow these guys as as football players what does it do when you guys have like your seven on seven stuff that you do it's not with their schools or their teammates because they're is actually restrictions on that. Um, But what is it that these kids are are benefiting from, from doing things like this? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing is they're getting an opportunity to play football at a time when they, they wouldn't normally. And, and our, our, you know, entire goal and mission in for E-Force football is just to raise the level of play of football across the board in the state of Oregon. And so we really want to operate in the margins of what other, other sports and other things they're doing. So, you know, from a commitment level, it's, at least from an e-force football standpoint it's not this isn't aau basketball or travel baseball we're not saying hey make a commitment for four months during your off season you got to miss your basketball games your baseball games to come travel and play with us but for a kid that football is his main sport and maybe basketball is a secondary sport and he's got an opportunity to go to the next level or he just wants to get better and, and be a better high school football player you know we provide that opportunity for him around his other things to travel and practice and do those sort of things from a seven on seven as a, as a tool, as a developmental tool, you know, I, I love telling people it's just a, it's just a piece in that wheel of development. It's not the end all be all, but for all the college coaches that are coming out against it, the thing is that, you know, they all run seven on seven at practice. So it's mm-hmm. not that seven on seven is a, a bad developmental tool. It's certainly not the end all be all when it comes to recruiting or, or evaluating players or development. It's just a piece of the puzzle. And it kind of started in a weird time too, because the first people that did it were, it, it was like the Willie Lyles type guys, right. you know, where right. it was more of a rec- recruiting right. thing right. than anything else. Do you st- are those guys still around, or has the NCAA been effective in weeding those types of guys out? Who it, they're basically their whole thing is selling kids. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like anything else, you're going to have two sides to it. I mean, there's some some guys that do it really well and do it the right way and and it's really about, you know, how can I make, you know, this this individual athlete better? Can I get him a little more exposure than he had before as opposed to the other side of it which is, hey, I'm going to try and, you know, sell this kid to a school or I'm going to try and, you know, make it a financial thing and and that piece of it is in, in any business, there's going to be people that try and take advantage of it. The NCAA has done a nice job of, you know, you start kind of restricting times when guys can compete where, um, you know, colleges can't necessarily be there. So you don't get as big of a recruiting focus. It's more about, I mean, it really is about, you know, the kids getting a little bit of exposure in January, February, March, leading into mm-hmm. their camp circuit when they go to colleges in, you know, May, June, July. All right. It, that makes a lot more sense. And it kind of seems like it is working. A little bit. Yeah, there's still the shady guys out there. Yeah, and I know from, from our forever. personal experience, a lot of our kids are are doing a you know, have not only have they gotten better, but they've been able to gain some confidence. Now they go to college camps, now they get offers. Guys that didn't have offers before are now getting in front of schools and, and competing and, and playing really well and getting offers. And so I think it does work from that standpoint. 